out of all these guys with the right stuff, but they have. Well, as well, as if, you know, there's a lot of pain in trying to hide something. I'm not saying they are, but it could be suggested that they're under stress. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that uh, here's the key phrase that perhaps we should take a look at. I don't believe that it is either realistic or something to expect that somebody is going to or a number of individuals are going to stand up and conclusively satisfy our curiosity. I mean, enough people have. We look at Major Kehoe, we look at uh, we look at Frank Edwards, we look at Waverly Gervin. I mean, the, there is really such an, an immense list of people. Uh, Professor McDonald, the one before the Statistics Committee in '68. If people really would have an idea at the plethora of information and the immense amount of so-called names that have come out in support of the release of this information, they would be truly astounded. And I believe that it's very important to remind people of the rich and very real history that is associated to this subject. And we have gone off in some very uh, convoluted tangents. How about a straight on question, uh, Glenn? Why do you believe, and obviously you believe, that our government has absolute knowledge of what's on the moon? Yes? Yes. Okay. What motivation does our government have? Uh, in your opinion, for not telling us? Well, it's difficult to put yourself inside the heads of somebody else. Uh, let's put it this way. Certain policies are initiated, and they are continued as a, just as a matter of fact. Okay, so that, uh, that just tells me about the ever-continuing cover-up. Uh, what I want to know from you is why you think, in other words, would, would knowledge of extraterrestrial presence as close as the moon have too much, be too much of a social disruption? Would it disrupt our churches, our faith, our very basis for everyday living?